Okay, I'm looking to get these videos up quickly. So as you can see, I've just come in from shoveling. I didn't bother to uh, clean up as if I was coming into the university. I just wanted to try to get all these videos up as quickly as I could so that way you guys could begin working on them because I imagine, like me, you guys probably have snow days with your uh, own schools. So if you can get a little bit ahead on some of these things, that's probably preferable to you. Um, so basically what I'm going to have here... and um, first, make sure if you haven't done so already that you have gone into the textbook, so the Creswell for the course, and uh, the readings for this week are chapters 5 and 7. And if you look at those two chapters, and if you remember what we were talking about last week when I indicated you know, how to go about doing these, uh, chapter 5 looks at collecting quantitative data. Chapter 7 looks at collecting qualitative data. So in both of those cases, you want to skim through right now what they say about each so you can get a little bit of a sense as to what each of the um, different data collection methods um, are about. And then once you decide upon multiple methods, then you can really dive into what it is that, you know, the ones that you specifically pick. In addition to what you've got in the textbook, what you'll see in your version will be a little bit different than what mine is and that'll change from video to video because as you can see right now there are no videos here because I'm sort of creating them as I go so I've got all of the resources put in there uh, but I'll be adding in the videos as I go so when you log in you'll see something that says video something you know video colon something that sort of intermixes within all of these particular items that you see here um, so but I'm in the Topic 2 folder, so I'm in the Data Collection Methods folder, so I've gone in and clicked on Course Content over here, and I'm now into the Data 2 folder, or the Topic 2 folder, sorry. And in addition to the textbook, the first two items that I've put here, which in your list will be the second and third items, so it'll be the two items that immediately follow this particular video. What you'll have there is a link from a web-based lesson at the Northern Arizona University called Methods of Data Collection where they give you a very brief overview, uh, usually a sentence or two, a few bullet points about a variety of different data collection methods. Similarly, the second one is this idea of an overview of both qualitative and quantitative data collection methods. This comes from a publication that was put out by the National Science Foundation entitled Their User-Friendly Handbook for Project Evaluation. While the link at the bottom here, so this link in ERIC, gives you the full handbook, the link right here will take you just to the individual um, chapters that I'm interested in, particularly it's chapters 5 and chapter 6 is where this particular link will take you to. In fact, it's not even chapter 5 that I'm interested in because this takes you to all of section 3. Um, it's chapter 6 that I'm really focusing upon, which begins, as it says here, on page 7 of the PDF or 49 of the document itself. So if I go over to this, you'll see that while it's page 1 of the PDF, when I scroll down here, you can see that it's page 43 of the document. So what I'm interested in you guys taking a look at right now is this section that begins right here on page 7 of the document or page 49 of, sorry, 7 of the PDF or 49 of the document that begins a review and comparison of selected techniques. So they'll use the term techniques and methods interchangeably and that's fine um, but it'll go through and give you you know sort of the main ones so surveys interviews focus groups um, observations uh, tests and other assessments and then I think the next one is documents um, you know and those sort of correspond with the items that I have for you in Blackboard in general so this is another one to sort of start to skim through to see which kinds of methods that you might want to select and the reason I say methods is because the way in which you're going to set this up is for each of your research questions you are going to have multiple methods of data collection 
the reason for that is one of the ways in which we will eventually go about ensuring the reliability and validity of your study is that you will triangulate your data over multiple methods. So if you were to go to the digital commons that we have for the six-year theses and look at some of the examples that are there, I'll just pick out a couple here. Uh, so this one here is by John Bulge. Um, Budge, sorry, John Budge. I always want to stick an L there for some reason. John Budge uh, called Flipping in a Technology-Rich Classroom. And the way in which he starts this section, and yours is the exact same way. So here's his data collection method section. So he basically reminds us of what the purpose of the study was. And then he says that essentially each of the research questions will be um, answered using multiple methods of data collection found in this table. So you'll see here's his research question. What are students' perceptions of a flipped math classroom? The data that he's collecting is through surveys and interviews. So that's how he's essentially answering that question. And then he gives a little information here. Now you won't be able to add that in yet, but that'll be something that gets added in afterwards. And then what follows is a subsection so you can see it's a level two heading here. A subsection about each of the methods that he selected in the order that they're listed here. So you see that surveys are first, interview second. And then this follows the same model that we had for our methodology section. So there's a paragraph or two that describes how John understands surveys and why surveys are an appropriate means to collect data for his particular study and then there's a paragraph or two that specifically talks about how he operationalized it. Now in his case you'll note that that second part is in the past tense because his study is done. In your case how you operationalize it will be written in the future tense because you are going to do the study. So if you look at this for example you've got a paragraph here where John is telling you you know about what surveys are good for and the type of data that is useful to collect and he's got a couple of citations here one of which the Cresswell one is obviously the textbook and then there was another one that John found and then in the second paragraph you see here this is how he operationalized it so you can see in the appendices appendix A he includes a copy of the survey um, he used a post survey so he did it after he did the flipped classroom model he used survey monkey as a way to deliver it so he did it online um, you know, he talks a little bit about what it included. He also provides a bit of a rationale for why he did it that way. So this, uh, you know, this particular, this group of authors here recommended that, you know, Likert style was useful for this type of, of data. So that's what he picked and why he picked it. Similarly, if you look at his section here on interviews, again, you've got a paragraph that has you know a couple of citations from the textbook as well as another citation here that talks about the use in his case because John was working with if I remember correctly it was middle school students um, he used a group interview as opposed to a um, a uh, an individual interview and he also used semi-structured interviews so you can see here he's telling you a little bit about those types of things and then in this next paragraph he goes in and gives you a brief description of essentially how he actually operationalized it including a copy of his interview protocol uh, to look at another example you know here's one from a student Jen Hill whose thesis was on the impact of early numeracy interventions in a kindergarten or on kindergarten students so you can see again she reminds us of what the purpose of the study is and then she says my data collection methods are here in this particular table so when you look at the table she actually has three research questions so here's the first research question what is the impact of early numeracy intervention on students and she's actually using artifacts, observations, and the Ames Web 10 as her data that she's using to answer that question. And then she has a second question that actually has two parts. And she's using the Ames Web 10 assessment 
and artifacts as a way of answering that particular question. And if you look at it, again, we start off with, if you look at the list here, artifacts was first, observations, and then Ames Web 10. So as you look down here, we've got a subsection about artifacts. So as you can see here, Jen has actually got two paragraphs, one that focuses upon things that she got from the textbook, another one that brings in a couple of different uh, citations that she found on her own or a couple of different resources she found on her own as to why you would use um, artifacts and documents and then she takes a paragraph here that tells us essentially the types of artifacts and what are specific artifacts that she plans on using and also again ties it into the literature uh, for her particular study moving on to observations which was the second thing that Jen had listed up there um, you know, so she goes through and gives us a couple of paragraphs on observations. Um, so the first one was more about observations in general. The second one looks specifically at participant observations. And again, you see using Cresswell, the textbook, as well as, you know, other resources that she's bringing in. And then she's got a paragraph on how she's going to operationalize this. And in this case, she actually has a, you know, a fair amount of, of literature that she's brought in the textbook with Creswell again there, plus two other references that she's using to explain why she's doing her observations the way she's doing them. You know, so in the case of, you know, the first one, uh, she says, as recommended by these guys. You know, so that's why she's doing it in this particular way. These guys also suggested that I do this. Um, you know, and this is one of the things that observations can, and in my particular ways, in my particular study, this is one of the ways in which I am using observations, and here's a citation as to why that would be supported. Uh, similarly, here's her Ames Web 10, or test of early numeracy, that she used. So she gives us a little bit of information about this particular type of of um, data collection method. In this case, it's a uh, validated, reliable assessment that has been used um, considerably, actually. And, you know, she's just adopting its use. Um, she tells you a little bit about, you know, why, you know, assessments are useful in general in terms of um, a method of data collection. And then you see a paragraph here that talks about how she's operationalizing it. So unlike the other ones where there were two that told you about her, how she understood it, this one only had a single paragraph about how she understood it, and then a single paragraph about how she's actually using it in her study. You know, so she tells you when it's going to be administered. She tells you how it's going to be administered. Uh, she tells you, you know, at what points it's going to be administered um, to different groups and, you know, how she's going to be using that data. So this is what is going to be expected of you in terms of the product that you submit in two weeks' time. So this is why when you start your exploration of this and when you start looking through the two text, the two chapters in um, Cresswell, as well as these initial resources here in the top of Blackboard, the reason why you want to skim through these at this stage is because you're essentially trying to decide which methods of data collection are appropriate to answer my research questions. Once you've got that decided, once you know what methods you're going to be using, then is when you want to spend some more time with the resources specific to that particular method that you've got in mind um, below. So that's how you would want to go about moving forward on this front. In addition to the Creswell book that you guys have as part of your, um, you know, your course textbook for this course, when you're looking at any of these methods, any general research books, so this is just a selection. I've got about three times this much that I could have held up for you, but these are pretty much all of the ones that I brought in last week that were general educational research books. So things like, you know, a general introduction to mi uh, mixed methods approach, a general introduction to educational research, and an overview of quantitative research another overview of educational research in general, an overview of qualitative research, 
all of these books and pretty much any book that you would locate at the library or um, through Google Books or on Amazon that was looking at just qualitative or quantitative or just educational research in general is going to have a chapter or two devoted to different types of methods of data collection. Uh, so those are also general resources in much the same way that, you know, the Cresswell book has you know, two chapters, one on qualitative and one on quantitative. So each of those books should have a chapter about that. And I know some of you have actually picked up copies of the methodological books that we had last week. So you might have picked up a book on case study or on action research. Chances are that book also has a chapter in it that is focused upon uh, methods of data collection. So make sure you use all of those resources that you have available in addition to the ones that I've provided to you here in Blackboard as you start to put together this part of your chapter three.